Take a look at this. I have two ship fleets with the same amount of ships. One uses auto-generated best design and the other one, seemingly weaker, is by my own design. The result is interesting, isn't it? So is the game's auto-generated designs really the best? Moreover, how can you design your own ships? Well, all that I hopefully will help you find out. And if you in turn want to help me out, well, do check out my Patreon page down below. It really does help supporting this kind of content. So then, you want to build your own ships, but as you open up the ship designer, it's all Greek to you. Well, worry not, let's start slow. Now, you can open up the ship designer by pressing F9 on the keyboard or just simply picking that icon on the side. Now, before you make your own designs, uncheck the auto-generate designs and then you can freely add your versions. Just click on the save and you're done. Oh, and they all have to have different names, so pick one and the save should light up. As for the information, well, on the left you can see all the designs you have made, or when you select some weapons or things, you see the equipment you can pick. In the middle you can see the ship and the slots that it has, and equipped items. Pretty simple, right? And on the right you can see the stats. So to basically add a module, you just need to click on the slot that you want to finagle, and the options will appear on the left. Then just click on whatever you want to put in it, and just drag it over. Or to remove it, just right Right click on the slot. Now, when you select the ship on the top of the screen, you can see the little button. That allows you to select different variants of the same ship. Take, for example, Corvette. You have selection from missile boat, picket, and interceptor with different weapon ports. Other ships have multiple sections interchangeable, so you can get pretty deep into making your own army and customization. For me, it was very daunting, but once I realized what everything meant, I really started to enjoy this. When it comes to equipping a module to your ship, as said, click on a slot and then select what comes up. In case for some reason you want some older gear, uncheck the obsolete gear tick box and voila. Also the game automatically equips appropriate slot items, so you don't need to worry about the sizes not fitting or whatnot else. I love it, frankly. Also in selection, if you just mouse over the sizes, you will see their stats as well before equipping. As for the other modules on the right-ish side, they have no extra versions, so basically the better version, the better overall, right? Except for the combat computers and auras, and I'll talk about those a little bit later, because it's time for some... Let's start with the ship stats. Now, each ship has three main health points. If you ever played Borderlands or similar games, you probably know the concept. But for others, well, basically you have health points for the hull, which when it reaches zero, the ship explodes, the armor health on top, and then even more on top of that, the shields. So with normal weapons, you would first take down the shields, then the armor, and then the hull. However, there are weapons that penetrate either the shields or armor both. So relying just on the shields alone is, well, not smart. Shields, while they're cheaper, take more power to run. However, they are regenerative, well, after the combat's done. Unlike armor and hull, those you need to go and repair back at the starbase. Later, of course, you unlock a technology that, uh, well, basically regenerates it as well. But that technology goes in special slot and of course needs to be unlocked. Also, it's worth mentioning that the more damage you get on the hull, the more debuffs your ship gets. So protecting and of course being mindful of that when you engage uh, with broken toys is a good idea. Now, the secondary stats, like evasion percentage, well, that maxes out at 90 and determines how likely your ship is to evade damage. As for the speed, well, it's self-explanatory and it allows you to run away or catch up to enemies. And damage? Well, this helpful stat summarizes your ship's approximate damage. The autocomplete button generates a build that maxes out this as well as defenses. So while you may have the most damage, like I showed in the start, it may not be the best for the target you're fighting. And for the tertiary stats up top, well, those are the ship's cost, its build time, as well as its upkeep. Here, pay attention to special materials most importantly, because while you might be able to design a ship, it does not mean that your economy can sustain it or even build what you want. This often is screwed over by very special technologies and so on and so forth, so keep an eye out on that too. 
And finally, the quaternary stats, the power. This determines how much leftover power you have or over the limit your build is. There is a bonus, mind you, if you have more power left over to evasion, damage and speed and so on and so forth, but it's not enough to offset another weapon, trust me. So better just put an extra gun, then hope that that extra percent or two will make it count. Now, of course, in the late game, it might be helpful, sure, but at the start, don't bother. And special values. Well, here you'll see the piracy suppression that your ship generates being in the system. And sensor range, which tells how many systems ahead can your ships see. Technically, you could use a small fleet of corvettes to generate easy XP for your admiral by patrolling your systems, but I prefer to just let the ships stay docked and lessen their upkeep. Because pirates, well, rarely are a real threat, if at all. And XP you generate, well, a good war or two will do the trick. And moving on to weapon stats. For majority, it's pretty obvious what each does. Like that basic corvette at the start of the game. It has a mix of lasers and mass drivers. One is good for the shields and the other one is good for the armor. And more or less you would play around with that. But as more technologies get unlocked, the more interesting weapons you shall start to see. And more specialized builds you might actually need. So what does each stat mean? As for the damage, well, it's self-explanatory. Just roll a d12 and see what the damage is, adventurer. As for the cooldown, well, that's your fire rate. But what you should be more looking at is the average damage. This really tells you what kind of damage you can expect from each weapon. After that, damage buffs and debuffs. Well, each weapon has its pluses to some percentage on the health type or a minus. Like, for example, lasers. They do more damage to armor, but less to the shields. Some weapons, like the torpedoes, ignore shields altogether. And disruptors, they go through to the hull points immediately. As for the accuracy, this determines what are the chances you're gonna be hitting the target. And the tracking, on the other hand, deals with reducing the target's evasion. On the screen I put a formula that basically calculates what are the chances are for you to hit the target. So then when dealing with swarms of corvettes with 90% evasion, weapons with good tracking will be very useful. And that's generally all that you need to know about weapon stats. Oh, and some ships have Strikecraft that deploy too. While generally people say that they aren't as good as dedicated ships, you might find an instance where they can be the exact thing that you need. Remember that they also take time to deploy, so the longer engagement range you have, the better. That is, setting up your ship's combat computer for it. Oh, and there's the amoeba drones that are approximately as good as about tier 2 Strikecraft, but depending on when you get this, this technology might just be already out class. And finally, the combat computer that determines your ship's behavior. Take Corvette, for example. There are two behaviors. Swarm, which determines that the Corvette is gonna go point blank and try to attack as much as possible with extra combat bonuses. And the Picket, which is gonna hang back a little bit more with extra tracking, allowing for a better hit ratio. Basically, both are gonna go quite close and, I mean, they are both small ships, what do you want? For other ships there are, for example, artillery computer, which with right weapons, say artillery, could shoot from afar. This often is a good idea to deal with stations when they can't even reach you. However, just building out a ship for range will not bode well, as enemy can move quite quickly and that first long range shot in space ain't worth shit. So unless you really want to build those bunker buster type fleets, well, maybe pick something else. For strikecraft, well, there's the carrier pewter, so use that for the strike craft? I mean, I can't make it any more simpler. Oh, and for titans and juggernauts, the even bigger ships, they have their own unique auras. And all are good choices, depending on the situation. Okay, now that you know what everything does, what is the best build? Well, that like life has no singular answer. Yes, you can stick with that autocomplete build and refresh it once in a while, and it will do the trick just fine. Most of the time, you're not gonna attack with equal or barely stronger force anyhow, if you're smart. So 90% of the cases, you don't need to worry much about it. But you're not here for the 90% of the cases, are you now? 
First thing usually that, well, we used to do before that dick update was to check what ships and what loadouts did your opponents have. These days you need either diplomacy or espionage information to see what exactly your opponent carries. However, you can still see the basic stats of your opponent's stuff by simply mousing over their ships. Basic stations also have rather simple design that you can check by simply mousing over your own stations. They have rather simple design equipped with a missile and other stuff. Here it's a smart choice to always have some sort of a dedicated picket corvette or a ship at least in your starting fleets just to nullify that extra damage. Remember missiles unlike other weapons don't immediately hit the target, they usually take time to travel which makes them rather crap overall for your own stuff unless of course you're using torpedo boats with torpedoes. Anyways, you checked your opponent as much as you could, so how do you build out your ships? Well, you could equip disruptors to penetrate the shields and armor completely, or torps to at least ignore the shields. That is a viable option, true. Another idea is to see what is the biggest health portion of your focus target. Say, let's take a look at um, a normal juggernaut. He has lots of everything, but shields and armor in comparison to the hull are far, far outclassed. So that whatever negatives you may have, you better focus any weapons and all weapons, in fact, that are taking out the hull the fastest. So I'd say plasma launcher on ships probably would be the best idea here. Another tip I have is, well, obviously get an Admiral. The bonuses either to fire rate, damage, hull, evasion and more are absolutely worth it and will snowball your fleet's power greatly. After that, well, War Doctrine. While no retreat may sound like a good idea, saving your ships is actually better. So, hit and run tactics would be better idea. And finally, here are just simply recommended builds. For Corvette, as said, one picket ship per fleet is enough. In fact, current meta builds operate on basic two types of fleets, mass Corvette torp boats or battleship fleets, or a mix of both. For Corvette torp boats, eventually you want to build out a ship like this, autocannons being very powerful and torps compounding it. Mix in the fact that Corvettes are very hard to hit in the first place, well, oddly they stay relevant throughout the whole game. Alternatively, you can make mass fleets of interceptors with disruptors or exchange that torp boat's autocannon for a disruptor. But remember, play to your opponent's weakness or biggest health. And the same with defenses. You do not rely too much on one thing. For destroyers, eh, well, they're okay at the start, so balanced damage output is pretty much proper or just simply go with whatever autocomplete gives you. Just remember that they are not really used in the late game. For cruisers, now here we can make some artillery builds. Load it up with neutron launchers, which seem to be the best all-rounder weapon in the game and go to town. Alternatively, a full-on laser boat could work too. But more importantly, battleships. Full-on neutron launchers. You got a slot? Shove a neutron launcher in it, even if it doesn't fit. Neutron launchers for days. Oh, and of course, you can equip the front with a massive weapon, though it does depend on what you're up against. And then, well, basically do the same thing with titans. As for juggernauts, well, I say leave that honking fortress for support. It's just a mobile repair station, nothing else. Most of the time it's going to be cheaper to just better spam battleships and corvettes, since titans are also limited. And there you go, the basics on how to build a ship, what each means and some ideas for the best builds, at least in the current 3.0 DICK BUILD! So let me know if I missed or left out something and maybe if you got some ideas, well, put them down below. Other than that, if this helped you out, well, maybe you want to help me out on the Patreon, the link will be in the description below. Other than that, maybe check out the video on how to have the best start on Stellaris, and uh, maybe you need help on the economy, that video is also there. Oh, but one last thing, for the endgame crisis, you will have to use the shipbuilding thing, it basically is a mandatory thing now. So learn how to make those good ships, and not even those space ones trusties at the end of the game will stand in your way.